Hi guys, welcome back to another video again with Powers. I'm Jake, and today we have reached the culmination, guys. My most anticipated game of 2023, my number one, and this has been my most anticipated game for the last two years uh, since this game has been in production. So really quickly, just to give you a recap, my number five was Lobster Pot, number four was Barbaric, number three was Lords of Ragnarok, Number two was Tamashi Chronicles of Sin. And number one, guys, like I said, this is probably on a lot of your list if you love miniature games and boss battler type games. My most anticipated game of 2023, drum roll, is Primal The Awakening. All right. Primal The Awakening, guys, is a cooperative, a fully cooperative, like, deck crafting, bass, boss, I said bass battler, uh, boss battler uh, game where you're going to be fighting a whole bunch of monsters. Um, not going to lie, it, it has a lot of similarities to Monster Hunter, um, but um, I think it has just a little small different tweaks in regards to that. But let's go ahead and dive into the camp, the Kickstarter campaign page, which I got pulled up right now. All right, guys, so taking a look at Primal The Awakening, right? You can see this is a fully cooperative deck crafting boss battler board game featuring card driven tactical combat and large scale miniatures. Okay, this is coming to you from Reggie Games. All right. And uh, this has raised over $2 million, $2 million, 11,302 backers, guys. All right. So let's kind of scroll through here like we knew the danger. We always knew. We survived the wilderness of Thyria for years. But now ancient threats are upon us and the prophecy states the end will not be long in coming. The sage call it the awakening. All right. Primal the awakening. Look at this gorgeous miniature. All right. Uh, so we got a couple quotes here from a bunch of people. I do know they I believe they worked with the king of average to help uh, detail and get their advice and his or his advice and his opinion on a lot of the miniatures in the game. But it says Primal the Awakening is a massive cooperative monster hunting board game for one to four players set in a fantasy world where humans struggle to survive in untamed wilderness. The game offers deck crafting boss battle experiences focusing on card driven mechanics, crafting and deep character customization. Players will take on the role of hunters embarking on different quests to fight monstrous creatures collect resources and unveil mysteries and secrets about the surrounding of the world Thyria. All right. It's got cooperative big boss battles, tactical card driven combat, crafting and deep customization. All right. So let's just do like a quick look at all the components, right? So it's one to four players, about 30 minutes per player, 14 plus. It has a campaign mode as well as just an expedition mode. So these are all the contents in the game, right? You have all of the cards, and the player, the boards of the monsters here, you have the monster miniatures, you have the player characters and their boards and cards, and then you have the uh, board, the boss board that you'll be fighting the boss on, all right, as well as the rule book. So let's take a look at the core set, what we got in the core set here, right? We got 17 large scale miniatures, 1,200 plus cards, and a whole bunch of tokens, all right? So let's take a look at these hunters, right? So we have Darion. Again, guys, just the preferences. This is going to look very similar to Monster Hunter. Um, we do, um, I am aware of that. So we have Darion, with, uh, he especially is going to be the great sword, right? So you're going to have his board, his model, his action cards, and then his mastery cards, all right? We have Myra, the great bow, using a bow with her board cards and model. We have Thoreg, the hammer. Right, got a big, big hammer right there with his board cards and everything. And then we have uh, Le Journar or Lonar uh, with a sword and shield with his board and all of his uh, cards. So those are the four hunters that you will be able to choose from. And now let's take a look at some of these monsters here. We have the Varaxxon, all right? Uh, right here, it's got the model, the board, and his stance, and all of his cards, like a nice little dragon, right? We have the Karja, all right, which looks like a panther, like a fiery panther, or like a pan I don't want to say panther, cat, like a fiery cat, all right? We have the Toramat, all right, right here, with his cards and his board, looks like a giant uh, rock monster here, rock lizard almost, kind of. Uh, we have the Daigo Rax. All right, the Daigo Rax, looking like a um, wyvern almost, like a beefed up wyvern. All right, we have the Morcross, 
All right, the Morcross right here, looking like a crystalline version of Godzilla, giant uh, lizard here. We have the Felixer, all right, the Felixer, which is a, kind of looks almost like a crystalline wolf um, in a, or nine tails almost, Kitsune. All right, we have the Korowan, right, a giant crab. All right, so we've got the crab here with his board miniature and all of his cards. We have the... Oroshin or Xen, I don't know how to pronounce that. I probably pronounced it wrong, but your name, I apologize. Uh, and this looks kind of crazy. It's got four arms, kind of looks like a dragon slash lizard type thing. Well, sometimes a lizard technically is a dragon, but um, all right, same reptile. We have Azwe or Aze or Azu. Az I don't know how to pronounce that. All right. Uh, is like a giant lightning beetle is what this thing looks like. All right. We have Jekoros. All right. Which just looks like another crazy creature. It's got a long tail. Um, yeah. All right. That one. We have the Humrom. All right. This looks like a... Man, I can't think of this. Uh, like a drake almost. No, that's not a drake. Um, I don't know what that looks like. Can't think of it right at the top of my tongue. We have a Taragua, giant like mammoth looking type thing right here. Like a crazy looking mammoth, all right? So those are all the monsters that are coming in the game that you'll be able to fight. All right, so let's take a look at the crafting in the game, right? This is gonna be that deck customization um, that you can have in the game. So you will be able to craft uh, just generic standard cards of whatever weapon you are using. Uh, armor, uh, weapons, and equipment really is what you can craft. And then what's really cool is they've added in being able to craft like certain elements and different things like that. So you'll be able to craft fire, uh, weapons, and equipment. And like there's different levels or versions um, of that. So you're looking like you can see like a straight edge sword. You want to put some spikes on it or cover the whole thing in spikes. So there's three different, I don't know if there's le if there are levels, like if this is level one, level two, level three, and it continues to upgrade, or there is each own different weapon with uh, certain attributes. To me, it looks like they're just different levels because if you can see here, there's like just a straight blade sword. Then you're kind of covering that bladed sword with some of these spikes and then you're covering the entire blade with that material. So it looks like to me that you can upgrade again. Don't quote me on that. All right. But you'll be able to craft fire weapons and equipment. We have horn. Uh, being able to craft horn weapons and equipment. Okay. We have crystal weapons and equipment. We have coral weapons and equipment here. All right. We have thunder weapons and equipment. And then lastly, we have metal weapons equipment. All right. On top of being able to craft, you'll be able to do some alchemy, right? Being able to craft some herbs and some potions. Uh, so you'll have a level in regards to that, being able to do that. And then finally, the awakened, which is kind of like the big bad boss um, of the game, right? And this guy is going to be an XL miniature, right? So he will have his own cards and things like that. The other components in the game, you'll have the quest board with quest cards and contracts, as well as the combat board and cards and tokens, um, as well as character sheets and the scenario rule book. All right. So let's take a look at some expansions that they have as well. You have the first expansion, Chronicles of Mount Havoc. This is going to add in a fifth player expansion, right? So you're adding in uh, two new classes. We have Kara, the dual blade. So there's all of her cards and things like that, as well as all of her um, elements or things that you can, all of her craftable weapon and equipment and gears, all right? And then you also have Hellerin, the heavy gun, all right? Same thing, there's her miniature, her board, her cards, and then all of her weapon and equipment that is craftable, all right? The next expansion we have is Curse of the Sapphire. So this is the Feather expansion. So this is going to bring in new monsters, a new crafting element, and another campaign expansion. So taking a look at some of these monsters, we have the Pazis, or Pazis, kind of look like a... Um, that what's that lizard that flays out? I can't remember the one from Jurassic Park. Kind of looks like that. It looks very creepy. We have the Nargarjas, right? Kind of looks like a dragon a little bit in regards to that. You also be able to craft feather uh, weapon uh, elements or weapons and equipment as well. All right. 
So that is the uh, Feather expansion. The next expansion we have is the Miss of Ouroboro. Uh, Ouroboro, I'm sorry. Ouroboro. <laughs> Ouroboro, all right. This is the Venom expansion. So again, bringing in new monsters, new crafting elements in a campaign expansion. So let's take a look at some of these monsters. We got the Hydar, all right, which is like his hit element right there. Uh, looking like a, another giant lizard. All right, we have Rikau, a giant serpent, really creepy looking serpent thing. Man, that thing looks creepy, all right? So we have him, and then you'll be able to craft some venom weapons and equipment now, right? So you'll be able to go there and craft those items necessary. All right, the next expansion we have is the Borealis Wind, okay? This is gonna be the Frost expansion. Bringing you new monsters, new elements, and campaign expansions again. So the first monster we have is the Sarkage. All right. That's that thing looking like there. Man, that looks kind of creepy. Uh, we have the Mamorok. All right. The Mamorok kind of looking like a... I was going to say a moose, but not really. It's a creepy looking moose right there. All right. This is going to be able... And then you'll be able to craft ice weapons and equipment here for this one all right so then it just kind of talks about why back now and then taking a look at the pledge tiers you have the core pledge which was 139 euros or 168 us the gameplay all-in pledge for 249 euros or 299 us the everything primal uh let me go back here so the gameplay all-in would give you the original base game and all the expansions that are available. So the Curse of the Sapphire, Borealis Winds, Myth of Urubo, and Chronicles of Mount Havoc, which is the fifth player expansion, plus all the stretch goals. All right. Then the last one is the Everything Primal. So approximately 423 bucks, 349 euros. This is going to give you Primal the Awakening, all the expansions. It's going to give you the sleeve bundles for all of the cards in the game. You're going to get a Tome of Creatures art book, as well as a Combat Board Neoprene Playmat, and the Terrain Box, all right, as well as all of the stretch goals, all right. And then they just had everything as an add-on. So you can add on each individual expansion for $47. The fifth player expansion was only 29, uh, sleeves for 54, uh, sleeves bundle for the all in, which is 72, the tome of creatures, which was 23, and the combat board play mat for 19. All right, as well as the terrain box for 29, or you could get the add an add on bundle for 121, which would give you the terrain expansion, the combat board, the sleeves, and the tome of creatures. All right. All right, guys, so I'm actually going to skip this section of the stretch goals right here because they talk about them more in depth, um, literally right below all of these goals. So I'm going to kind of scroll through this pretty quickly, and here we go. So this is where I want to go to. So let's take a look at all the stretch goals that have unlocked and come in the stretch goals box. So day one, we got new equipment and campaign scenarios, okay? Um, day two, we unlocked a nightmare deck for the Karja, all right? And what this nightmare deck is, guys, is basically it's just a much harder version of that monster and all of his abilities. So they're going to be able to, they're going to do more damage, you'll probably have more health and make things a lot more challenging, okay? We're also getting a new campaign scenario and a new expedition, all right? Day three, we unlocked the Tarasca monster looking like an evil turtle snapping turtle okay so we got his board his cards in his model as well as some new quest cards and contracts that relate to him day four we unlock some new mastery cards so one mastery card for each hunter day five we unlock the nightmare deck for the oro shin all right day six the nightmare deck for the daigo rax day seven we unlock a new monster the zakath all right uh, man, that looks like that uh, insectoid from uh, League of Legends. I can't remember what that guy's name is. Um, with, the, with the size, the mantis looking guy. But we unlock him with his cards. There's his board, his miniature quest cards, contract cards related to him. Day 8, we're getting a nightmare deck for the Jacaros. All right. We also get a component upgrade to so linen finish on the cards and expedition mode expanded. Day 9, we get some legendary quests, okay, um, added to each of the base game and all the expansions. Day 10, we get some more upgrade cards, right? We get four upgrade cards for the Great Sword for each of the uh, core game, and then as well as the Chronicles of the Mount Havoc expansion, all right? We also get an expanded lore section into the scenario book upgrade and Secrets of Thyria additional narrative content, all right? Day 11, we get a nightmare deck for the more cost. And we also get a Nightmare Deck for the Terragua. We also get a Nightmare Deck for the Nargarhas. 
And we also get a nightmare deck for Recall. We get a nightmare deck for Mama Rock or Mamu Rock. All right. Day 12, Linen Finish on the box. And we get some two new contract cards. Okay. Uh, with a crossover, the Elo Darkness Pan crossover. That's kind of cool. We also get the Eggs of the Elder. So three new legendary rewards. Day 13, we get the Zytheros expansion. This kind of looks like a crazy T Rex or a Gigantos or Giganosaur. Uh, something crazy. So we get them with all of his cards and his board with the monster and the quests and contracts related to him. We also get the Temple of Hyrus legendary quest with four legendary rewards. All right. We also get a new nightmare deck for him as well. And then day 14, we get a double sided combat board and stretch goals box with two new finale options as well. And then the end game expedition, which is the awaken. So all of that is going to come in this stretch goals box. All right. So down here, we got some videos and some reviews talking about the game. Um, those are how to play and that's playthrough and things like that. So let's take a look at some of the game highlights, right? How does this game actually work? So you can see here, there's going to have the game board with the monster. There's going to be different sectors, okay? And you are going to be in each sector. And what's, this is what makes the game so new, unique and really cool is... It says the sector system is designed to add a deep layer of strategy to the car play. The system divides the combat board into four zones, representing the front, the flanks, and the rear of the monster. The game focuses on meaningful and strategic positioning, with the players moving around the board in order around the, or the players moving around the monster in order to hit its weak spots, avoiding its attacks to set up powerful combos. All right. Each scenario is unique and different as the map changes with the uh, addition of terrains that characterize the environment and must have a strong impact on gameplay. All right. Hand management and combos. OK, so every choice comes at a price. Your hand of cards represents both your combat options and your stamina. Each action card you play has a cost that you must pay by discarding other cards from your hand to generate stamina points. All right. It says there are no dice in Primal the Awakening. Players create a sequence of moves as they tactically optimize their action, balancing defense maneuvers and attack to pursue their combat strategy. Control the monsters, set up your defenses, and build up devastating combos. All right. Cooperative experience. Right? Your fellow hunters are the only ones who can help you survive, work as a team to protect each other, make use of synergies, and smart cooperative prey. So, like, I can, as a teammate, I can play cards from my hand to help my teammate during his turn and vice versa. And so, you can kind of combo these cards together and play off each other, all right? Uh, reactive AI. So, this is what makes the game most unique and really what separates it from... A lot of other games like it, you know, like Monster Hunter pretty much, right? Um, in Primal, the monster's AI system will react to your actions as you trigger specific reaction icons during combat. Players can learn the attack patterns of the monsters to anticipate their behavior and outsmart them with coordinated moves. Each monster has its own mechanic and personality to offer the hunters a unique strategic puzzle to solve, all right? As the game progresses, the monster gets stronger and reveals aggressive abilities and peril cards that the players have to address. The combat has three stages represented by three different stances of that monster. Players must complete all of them in order to win. All right. Uh, crafting and customization. So between the game sessions, players will have the opportunity to craft and customize their equipment based on the success of their quests. Each monster in the game is related to a specific element. By defeating monsters, the players unlock forge cards related to the monster's element that give unique that give access to unique crafting options, okay? And then resource management is also important during gear crafting. Each monster will drop specific resources that players combine to build armors, weapons, and other equipment listed in the unlock forge cards, all right? And within the same hunter class, players have a huge variety of builds and possible combinations of that of gear that completely change their combat strategy and their play style, all right? So again, this is that duck deck uh, crafting deck customization, all right? Here's to take a look at some of the deck construction, right? The game offers a deck crafting experience as your character gains XP points. You have the chance to customize your playstyle, having access to many deck building possibilities. Your weapon determines the number and type of cards that you can include in your deck, all right? And then um, the campaign mode, it's got a nice campaign mode, an epic campaign mode right here. In the campaign mode, players must choose their own path through an overarching story that connects multiple quests together. 
for a length of 11 to 15 game sessions. Each quest you choose leads to different events and to unique opportunities to gain special rewards, achievements, crafting options, and rare hunts. Your quests you follow will also impact the story as the campaign progresses towards the epic finale. If you don't really want to do the campaign mode, they also have a one-shot expedition mode, which is uh, the one-shot experience as well, being very quick to set up and easy to get into. In the expedition mode, players simply pick one of the 20-plus unique scenarios, featuring different levels of complexity and difficulty that are designed to be an agile yet intense self-contained experiment, right? All right, guys, well, look, that is Primal. Uh, this is Primal The Awakening, and let me tell you why. This is my number one most anticipated game of 2023. Starting off, uh, we're gonna go with the miniatures, right? The miniatures here, guys, the production of these miniatures is just gorgeous. Just being able to look at how detailed and magnificent some of these miniatures are right here. It's very top quality. Then even the hunters themselves, all the small little intricate details on all of them, just amazing quality and production uh, from all of these miniatures, okay? The next thing is the theme and the mechanics of the game in general, right? I love boss battler type games where you and your crew are gonna go fight a big baddie per se, and so I love how though it's almost like a streamlined version of a boss battler, right? Where I mean normally, like from my understanding is you're gonna read the scenario sheet, some things are gonna happen, and then basically the game board is just the monster and the sectors around it, and that's all you're doing, right? I don't have this big, giant, grandiose board where I'm having to move around to locate the monster or do different things to locate the monster. It's, hey, I read the scenario sheet, we come upon the monster, we encounter him, and bam, we're already in the fight. So it seems like a more streamlined version of that boss battler type, and the boss is not moving around the map as well. It's literally like, hey, we're in close quarters combat. Like, you know, as me and my friend like to say, we are in the cut. We are in cut scrapping. Like, we're ready to go. Boss ain't moving. I can move around the boss. But other than that, he's either moving around. Uh, he is moving in a circle. And we're just moving around him to try and get better position, right? I don't have to worry about this dude moving all the way across this side of the map. And then I got to move to try and go get him. And so that's another reason why I'm very excited about this game. All right. The next thing is the crafting system, okay? Talk about the crafting system. So being able to craft all of these different types of weapons, I think, again, this is just so awesome, where I get to choose, and again, like I said earlier, these weapons and elements um, correspond with like particular monsters, right? All of your monsters are gonna have an element that they're strong against. All of your monsters are gonna have an element that you're weak against. So. To be able to mix and match and craft all these different items, again, it's giving me that awesome feel of, of um, Monster Hunter, right? Where I can go in, forge my weapons, forge the elemental weapons, take those in the battles, and kind of do all that, right? So this is pretty awesome and why I'm excited about this game, all right? The next thing is the reactive AI. So again, let me scroll down. So the reactive AI, man, this system is very unique and so... Um, to me, it just looks so cool that it's like, yes, I'm fighting a boss, but the boss is going to be reacting and doing a bunch of things to what I'm doing. So we have to carefully try and plan these things out. And it really feels like you're fighting an actual monster. And so that's what's really cool about that, right? So again, this is this game just looks so amazing. I can't wait. All the different combinations, you know, it's co-op. Um, it has deck crafting, be able to take all these different builds into the game. Not only does it have a campaign mode, it's got a one-shot expedition mode. Um, it's got a crap ton of monsters that you're going to have. So to me, this is my number one go-to game, and this is perfect for what I want to do. Um, I'm going to play this game all the way through and get all this content one way or another. And so, uh, you know, it can play a solo, it's cooperative as well. And so it's just amazing. The production in general, the mechanics, the way the game works, I'm very, very excited for Primal, and I know a lot of other people are. Okay, so that being said, I went ahead, as you can imagine, since this is my number one game, I had to go ahead and do it. I went the gameplay all in early bird right here, the 24 hour special for 289. That's basically getting everything in the game, um, all the expansions and all of these stretch goals, okay? I want, I love this game. I'm going to very into this game. That's what we're going to go ahead and do. 
Now, this game was originally set to deliver in March of 2022. So I'm gonna be honest with you guys here. Um, this is one of the, the main, main reason as to why I really chose this game over uh, Monster Hunter World because there was a time where you could late pledge both of them at the same time, all right? The reason why I did this one is because they it was expected before Monster Hunter World, okay? And so it is a little disappointing that this game is still not here yet and it's not going to be coming for a, another while. Um, but I do understand um, some of the some of their issues that they've occur that have occurred and some of their explanations. Okay, I'm not going to dive into all that because that's just a bunch of unnecessary um, drama that I don't want to talk about. And nothing. I'm not saying that it was bad stuff. Um, there was some good and some bad. But when you're dealing with a lot of cards with a lot of text and all these things like that. You want to make sure all that stuff is perfect and the proofreading and the translations you want to get all that stuff down right i have heard with monster hunter world there are some people that have said a lot of the cards the uh, some things are misprinted they don't um fully say it's hard to understand some of the cards and so it seemed seemed very rushed okay and so they're just kind of taking their time with that so this was expected in march of 2022 all right, this one now, their new updated timeline is December of 2023, okay? So that is their new updated uh, timeline in regards to Primal. But I cannot wait for this one. I know there's a lot of people that are really waiting on this game, and they when they got the prototype of it, they said this game is phenomenal. This is a lot of other people's number one favorite game or most anticipated game, I believe, that they are waiting on. But this is mine, Primal The Awakening, guys. Crossing my fingers and hoping that's here in December. All right, guys. Well, look, that is my list. That is my top five um, most anticipated games of 2023 that I have back. Uh, we got a special treat coming up for you uh, sometime next week. Sierra is going to sit down and do her top five most anticipated of 2023. So be on the lookout for that list. I got a little sneak peek. We kind of did it together. Um last night and so it's very funny what uh, her top five was and then some of her worst games that she has no interest in at all are and we'll go ahead and share all that news with you guys uh when she actually sits down and talks about her games but if you like this content guys please go ahead and drop a like down on this video uh please go ahead and hit that notification bell so you can be notified when we drop new content and as always if you are not subscribed guys please go ahead and subscribe to our channel so we can continue to bring you more awesome content like this kickstarter stuff and just being able to help out the community in general all right guys y'all have a great one bye